It's emergency. Tell me exactly what's happened. Um, she started coughing and then, um, she's going to the blue and then, I don't know what it is. How about the patient? Um, we like to It's a baby. She is as critically ill as you possibly can be. If you look at the amount of blood that's in her chest right now, so that's come on, like, over a course of minutes, if not an hour. The normal causes in a baby this age, for that to appear, take days to occur. You have to stay with the kids, yeah? Mm. Not out of your sight. Mm? Not out of your sight, yeah? Whenever a baby suffers an unexplained cardiac arrest, Police are called to investigate whether there are suspicious circumstances. I take it no you idea. get there and the child's just lying there. On the floor, yeah. in the living room. Yeah. Not breathing, breathing. One, no. no. Don't suppose we have dad's seat else, do we? Well, I didn't even talk to him. I just scooped and run. Yeah, okay, just basically. Yeah. But he came down to meet us, didn't he? Because we couldn't get in, we were banging on the door. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Are you your mum? OK. He's on route as well. He was kind of following behind us, but we had to rush out quickly. Yeah, just because it's um, because it's something like this happens, we automatically get called. The baby is stabilised overnight. She is transferred to a specialist hospital, where brain scans will determine how critically injured she is. Detective Constable Martin Hart takes charge of the case. He has recently joined the child abuse unit, Carver. In Carver, we get called to the hospital when a child is incredibly ill. Normally, it's life or death. And the hospital have concerns as to how this child has ended up in the situation it's in. DC Hart here to see Dr. Simona Lamparelio. You have to assume that the worst is going to happen. Potentially, that child will die. You treat it as a murder investigation. Here we can see this uh, area of white uh, represents blood, which has tracked in between the two halves that make up the brain. With an accidental injury, normally you would have injuries that are external, bruising, external bruising, cuts, broken bones. In this case, uh, there were no such external injuries. Right. So the implication is that it is likely to be non-accidental. The common name is shaken baby syndrome. The parents have been questioned about what happened to their baby. Detectives Martin Hart and Sharon Ellis review their first accounts of the night. OK. Come on, play. A prepared statement will be advanced, and I'll read this aloud for the benefit of the case. My daughter has been a very sickly baby since she was born prematurely. I cannot think of anything that may have happened to her to cause the injuries. I completely deny hurting my baby in any way. On my solicitor's advice, I wish to exercise my right to silence from here on. So she goes, no comment throughout. Yeah. And totally disengaged. I get the stress, but had anything happened to my boy, I would have been telling everyone everything I possibly could. I, I don't care what a lawyer would say. Complete contrast to Dad, then. He gave his full account. I was feeding my daughter that night. Then I went up to go up to the toilet. Well, on my return to the room, she was coughing quite intensively. And I just reached up to pick her up. And she started choking. I knew something was wrong, and I've dialed 999 immediately. Have you ever got upset when baby's crying? If we would get upset or tired of her crying, we followed the advice of the health visitor, putting her into a chair and walking away for a few minutes. So no accidents, no falls, no explanation. He can offer no explanation for what's happened. OK, so there's no mitigation, there's no accident. No. Those two were the only two that had contacts. Did he say that anyone else had that baby? No, they were the only carers for the, for the baby over that window. I've only got two people. Uh 
-hmm. that can have hurt that child. Mum or dad. That's it. When I was working in CID, we would deal with GBH, attempt murder, blackmail, and I would quite regularly have CCTV. You might have a weapon, and you'd have potentially phone work. With something like this, you have nothing apart from the parents. You do hope that one of them will be honest enough to come forward and say, well, actually, this is what happened. Because if you can't prove who had hold of the child when the injury happens, you're not going to prove the offence. I'll cut straight to the chase. How does it make you feel that there's a report from a consultant paediatric neurologist basically saying that you or your partner have hurt your kid? No. OK. Is there anything at all that you'd like to tell me with regards to the injuries it caused? No. Is there anyone that you think may have done that without your knowledge and not told you? No. He has come out and said, it's not me. It's one of you, according to the medical. Can you recall, from the time of her birth, any accidents that she may have been involved in with you? My advice remains the same. Is there anything at all to prove that you haven't hurt your child? No. I really don't think there's anything else I can ask. Detectives bring in the father of the critically injured baby. Unlike his partner, he has previously agreed to answer their questions. The paediatric surgeon has ruled out completely that it could be illness. That injury was caused by harm. What can you tell me about that? Now, Rightly or wrongly, because you were the last person to be with her before she was taken into hospital, sometimes people point fingers. Did you lose your rag with her that night? No. Did anything happen at all that could explain, in your opinion, the bleed on her brain? You've got nothing. If they don't tell you what's happened, you've got nothing. If I can't prove who committed that injury, I can't charge anyone. That's the law. Subsequently, the CPS decided there was not enough evidence to say whether either parent deliberately harmed their child, and no further criminal action is taken against them.